I'm fine. Andrew McCart, IFL TV. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Spencer Fearon. Spencer, the first thing I see when I look at this screen is I see a number 50 on that birthday card over there. Happy, <laughs> happy yeah. birthday, brother. Thank you very much, my friend. We spoke a little bit off camera, man. I'm 10 years younger than you, but I look a little bit, I look older than you, which is, I mean, I do eat right. I do train right. Um, I, like I say, maybe maybe having no sun in Scotland and fighting the elements is probably <laughs> the wind and the rain and the sleep. Maybe just aging me quicker. I, I would say maybe that, but you, you've also got a concern about your diet. And uh, and <clears throat> I would say, um, gracefully, um, uh, your health is your wealth. So once you understand that you've got to continually be healthy and do healthy stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say meditation has got a lot to do with it and also prayer. So once you're praying, you're good. So, you know what I mean, we're winning out here. Definitely. We're right? definitely. May, I also say, may I also say thank you because that's actually from Carisha and Dom. And they also got me something is like our kids go to the same school. So I'm going to massive shout out to the right family because they're good people. So thank you. Oh, good, good. Listen, this must be a little man cave because I see some awards there. I seen boxing gloves when you spun the camera. I see a head guard. There's no, there's no, there's no way you're still sparring because there's a head guard behind you. Turn, move your head. Move your head, slave. Oh, there's a head guard yeah, right yeah. there. You're not still sparring, are you? In the corner, in the this is my. I'm in my office, so in the corner of the office, I've got like loads of boxing equipment now as well. So yeah, I mean, was it um, Bravo? Thank, thanks to them, they sent me like I help out. Um, a lot of the kids at the Power Mobile gym, big up my little niece um, Shan. So I got like, so I do a little bits with them. So it's it's all good. But obviously, we have not. You haven't contacted me on on Boxing Day to talk about nothing else but no, boxing. No. How, how? I mean, how profound is that? That's what I'm talking about. Like I was sitting here. I I, I got home late Christmas Eve, early early morning of Christmas Day. Spent time with the family. Spent went down to see my mum today, and I thought, you know what? I spent a day and a half and I haven't spoke boxing yet. And let, let's see what Spencer's up to. I know Spencer will be good to talk boxing on his boxing day. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about what happened in Saudi Arabia. I was blessed and lucky enough to be out there um, <clears throat> to witness something magnificent, not just the fight night, but just the way the Saudi Arabians, the way Saudi and Turkey Al Sheikh, His Excellency, are just their mind and the way that they, their, their vision of everything that's to come. Uh, it's going to be tremendous, it's going to be big. But Spencer, I want to talk boxing, so just let's just jump straight in at the deep end. Anthony Joshua, Otto Wallen, um, a lot was made of uh, Otto Wallen being this tricky southpaw coming off the gas here. When he's a tough, he took Dyson through the distance. A lot was made of Anthony Joshua's mindset going into this. His trainer, uh, tra changing trainer again to Ben Davidson, um, and then he pulled off that performance. Just explain to me what you saw from Anthony Joshua on Saturday. <clears throat> um, I saw a man who who had belief in himself. Yep. I think the last two fights that Andy Josh has had, he hasn't had a totality of belief. And like I stated before, if there is no enemy within, the enemy outside can do you no harm. And I think with Anthony Joshua, especially with his mindset and everything else, that you know he's, he's found he's found himself. And I've got to give credit to Ben Davison. Um, I'm not going to say it was in Ben Davidson at the right place at the right time. I think Andy Joshua needed someone that he could connect with. Mm -hmm. He's connected with this person on the boxing philosophical standpoint. And I think that Andy Joshua is connected with himself on the spiritual sound standpoint. And because he's done that now, we're going to get performances like that from Andy Joshua, where he believes in himself. Right? Everything else had nothing to do with all trainers or anything. It was down to Andy Joshua is if Andy Joshua had that belief in himself. And I think he's now being surrounded um, by people that are actually trying, have made him reconnect with his <laughs> his belief. And now that he's got that, Andrew, I'm telling you, this guy's, I said this before on, with, with you. I said, like, I don't doubt that Andy, Andy Joshua could become heavyweight champion of the world again. He boxed on Saturday night and he proved to the world that he can actually become heavyweight champion of the world again. Mm. The thing is, as well, obviously, there was a lot made of this tricky southpaw that gave Tyson Fury kittens, 
who beat Gassiev. There was a lot made. There was a lot onus on Otto Island being a tougher fight for Anthony Joshua than Parker was for Deontay Wilder in that fight week. But Joshua made that fight what, look easy. I, I, I probably count one punch that maybe landed on Joshua. But Joshua... Yeah, straight, still, yeah, the, the straight left hand. Straight left hand. Yeah. Around three. Yeah, that right? was the um, punch I counted. And I think that Joshua's just went in there with the the right game plan. All fight week, Spence. You know yourself, ex-fighter. You've been in the game long enough. When every other fighter on that fight card is talking about the fights that could happen in the future, Anthony Joshua was straight down the middle. Wallen. Don't talk to me about Wilder. Don't talk to me about Tyson Fury. Don't talk to me about Usyk. Talk to me about Wallen, and then we'll talk after. That was his mindset. I think that paid off. <clears throat> it did. It did pay off. And credit where it's credit where you got to give it, man. You have to give it to where it, Listen, that was impressive. And the thing that impressed me the most about Andy Joshua in his performance was the way that he was ready to stamp authority. Right? So when you're doing that, you shown you showed me, and I don't care who it was against, right? Mm -hmm. That you've kind of exercised those demons, right? Or that thing of like your lack of self-belief, which I was seeing many times in I, I saw that in the I saw that in the Hellenius fight, I saw that in a Frank, especially in a Franklin fight. Because really and truly, now I believe that I was justified now in saying that if if Franklin, I, I know Andy Joshua, I'm saying if Franklin went over six rounds with Andy Joshua that he should retire. Franklin would have gone three rounds with Andy Joshua that we saw on the weekend. Call it as it is, right? So I know that everything was down to Andy Joshua and he decided to believe in himself and credit Ben Davison for instilling that belief in him. That's what i got to sell it now, straight standard. But you could see from the little snippets of training that he was doing, right, um, when he's on the bag and he's punching mitts, you could see, like, he was he was going to be very intentional with the shots that are going to be thrown, right? And I I believe it's the accumulation of everything that Andy Josh has gone through. We'll be training with Robert McCracken. We'll be training with... Um, Angel Fernandez, with his training with Robert Garcia, with his training with Derek James. Like I said, Derek James is sacked now. You know that. You do realize that, right? Derek James is sacked. He's got enough money, but Derek James is gone, right? And we're going to see now where, where Andy Joshua pro proceeds to. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I am so, I'm so looking forward to it. Do you, you, you expect him to stay with Ben Davidson? I mean, at the post fight press conference, he was heaping a lot of praise on Ben, Lee Wiley, and all the rest of the guys down at uh, that gym. Do you see that being the future team going forward for Anthony Joshua? Most, most definitely it's going to be, right? Because if he had a standout performance like that, uh, and he's, he's had two fights with Derek James, if he, had, if he had a standout performance like that, right, then he would have stayed with Derek James. He didn't have those performances with him. And I think it's a lot to do with like him being back in the UK, right, him being, right, and just things gelling. And it's, it's gelled. I can't say that. I didn't think it was going to gel. I'm going to be real. But it's, it's gelled, right? You can't now, get everything right, Spence. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I know, right? So <laughs> it's, it, has, it has properly gelled. So all the props in the world to that team, I can't sing enough praises. And and I'm not even forgetting, you know what I mean, my guy Barry Smith as well, because yeah, he's part like... of the team as well, right? I'm, I'm not, I can't, I can't. I'm saying like, it's easy to say, okay, then you've got this finely tuned athlete in A.E. Joshua. But it's not only that, it's Anthony Joshua being mentally correct. Because mm. Anthony Joshua is a phenomenal athlete anyway. Mm. But now that he is mentally correct, we can see that in the fight. I'm looking forward to, to knowing what we're going to get from this young man. And I still call him a young man because I'm still Uncle Spencer to these kids. So it's like I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen. Definitely, me too. Now, Spence, I do want to keep talking about Joshua, but obviously the future fights, but I'll run down the card quickly. Joseph Parker upsetting and almost shut out against Deontay Wilder. Did you see that? Did you see that, be honest? Because I didn't see that happen. Yes. I mean, a, a yes. lot of people... But be real. I'm going to be real. Myself and Tundi saw this upset, right? We, we did the watch along on the Fighters Right channel, right? On the Simon Fussell channel. And I saw it prior. JD Dyer, who works for TNT now, and Ron McIntosh, who was doing the BBC commentary for the live link for the radio, 
I phoned them the night before. I was on the phone to them, right? And I said, remember I'm telling you that Joseph Parker is going to be Deontay Wilder. And they laughed at me like I was on drugs. So much that I felt embarrassed, I changed my mind. Because I saw Josie Parker box the last time out. And I'm telling you, Josie is clicking for Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker is a problem. And I'm going to tell again for people who know boxing, if you don't know boxing, I'm going to let you know. But Joseph Parker was, the, was one of the major factors of the reason of the demise of George Joyce. And people say, what are you talking about? Because it was Zilli Zhang. No, it's always the fights before. Watch the fights before. That was a very, very hard fight for Joe's, for, for, for Josie Parker because he came at second best. But it was also a very, very hard fight for Joe Joyce. And those fights take their toll on you, right? But what did he do? He had to go back to the drawing board. He had to humble himself because he's in the camp with Tyson Fury. So, you know, you ain't number one. In, you're not number one in your camp, right? You're number two. But you're number two in your camp for a good reason because... Maybe he needs that because in New Zealand, he's a massive superstar, right? You know, I know Joe, everyone, look, Joe's proper people. He's nice people, Joseph Parker. Yep. He's a massive star. He's humbled himself to say, right, I'm going to the UK. I'm going to go around. And Andy Lee, credit to him. The reason why Andy Lee, because Andy Lee's old school. But Andy Lee was around the old master in Emmanuel Stewart. He not only was around, he lived with him, mm -hmm. right? Andy Lee knows boxing. And Andy Lee also knows game plans. You don't believe me? Go sit down and talk with him. So they made the correct game plan for Wilder. But then also, is it more to do with Wilder's found himself as well? He's found himself. A killer He's instinct. Himself. Yeah, that killer instinct. He's content. Didn't... He's content. He's civilized now, man. Mm. Right? And a lot of that's got to do with Malik Scott trying to make him a boxer. Right? You, if it's working, you know what they say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Add to things, but Deontay Wilder was trying way too hard to be Sugar Ray Leonard. Mm. Right? When he should have been who he was, but would like, maybe like little fine tweaking, but you don't change what this guy has got. He's got phenomenal punching power. Right? Mm. And now it's like, oh, he's just a one trick pony. But that trick. pony is not that trick no more. So it was a lot to do with, I'm not going to take away not, nothing to do with uh, Josie Parker. Josie Parker, he's a damn good fighter, man. Mm -hmm. Right? And when I was in Saudi for his last fight out, I was out there, big up gold star and Spencer Brown. When I was out for that fight, and I watched Josie Parker, and the things that I saw in him, I to me, I said it, I think I said on one of your interviews, Josie Parker's better now than he was when he was world champion. Mm -hmm. And like I'm reading the comments, people are like, oh, shut up, Spence, what are you talking about? Are you, you going to disagree with me now? He's just said the best one of his career. Yeah, okay. well, I'm not going to disagree with you, Spence, but I won't, what we'll say, but that whole fight week, I got to spend a lot of time with Andy Lee and, and Joseph Parker, and even just off camera, just sitting down, maybe having a coffee or whatnot. And I've never seen a team so confident leading up to that fight week. I mean, they were ultra confident with the self-belief and you know yourself when you've got belief in yourself and everything's just clicking whether it be consistency in fights that was his what third fourth fight this year against Wilder he just had that belief in him where he he couldn't envision himself losing he never thought about that and that's the way he went into that fight well like trust me I'm beating him and the self-belief that Joseph Parker was just it's something I hadn't seen before in a fighter that 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 self I've seen fighters say I ain't losing this fight and they've got that self-belief, but the way Joseph Parker, you know Joseph Parker, Spencer, he's such a nice guy. How nice is this man? And his self-belief is unbelievable. Him and Andy Lee. Well, listen, when you believe in your belief, your belief becomes your reality, and that's what happened on Saturday night for him. Excellent, excellent, excellent fight for him. The fight weren't good. It's an excellent fight for him. The fight wasn't really a good fight, right? It weren't. Um, because we're sitting down with his expectation of what's Deontay Wilder going to do next? And I want to ask this question, right? And this is not me throwing, throwing any shots at uh, Malik Scott. But where was plan B for Deontay Wilder in that fight? Where was it? I want to know where, where was it. That's all I'm saying. And that debacle of a performance has robbed us of seeing Anthony Joshua 
versus Deontay Wilder. It's robbed us of that. Oh, we're never going to see that fight. We're well, never going to see that. Touch, that. I was not touching that before I spoke about Dubois and Miller, but we'll talk about Dubois and Miller in a minute. That you, you, you think that fight's dead, even with the excitement the of fight, that fight? Bro, bro, the fight, the fight's dead. The fight's dead. I'm going to be real to you. The fight's dead. There is no interest in me. And if I was any Joshua, I wouldn't take that fight either. The fight's dead. Right? Uh, Let yeah. you, you, go on and maybe fight Hergovic for the vacant IBF because you know the titles are going to become fragmented after um, uh, Usyk versus Tyson Fury. The titles are going to get fragmented. Um, the fight's dead. And especially after that performance, there is no reason to say that anyway. He did, Deontay Wilder would have to come back and have some really big boy knockouts. Like, um, you know, I like to see Deontay Wilder fight. You're going to think I'm crazy. I like to see him fight Derek Cesaro. I thought you were going to say George Royce there. No, I like, no, 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 no. I like to see him fight Derek Cesaro. That's the fight that I like to see. You know, you're going to get comments for that. I know him. I like to see that fight. <laughs> because as far as I'm concerned, it's a safer fight now for Derek Cesaro. I've never wanted to see that before. I'd yeah. like to see it now. <laughs> right? Yeah, because I know Derek would, Derek would come to try and stick it on him and Dante Wilder would have no, 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 nothing else much for him. Yeah, I, don't, I would like to see that fight. I've said it. I don't care. <laughs> well, let's, I, I do want to touch on, well, like I said to you, but I want to touch on a fighter that you're probably just, I never saw you watch long because I was out in Saudi, but I, I guarantee you were probably jumping up and down out your chair, like throwing Bro. your head out the way. Daniel Dubois, against Jarrell Miller, eight seconds left or 10 seconds left in the last round, Spencer. I can envision you. I can already see the way you were acting on that that, that live stream. So go ahead. I was going to so was Tundi. Listen, um, I know Daniel Dubois' father very well. Uh, I've known Don Charles since I've been 12 years old. You know what I mean? Um, Don Charles has been very supportive to me in the, in the past, especially like when I lost my mom last year. And... Uh, it's nice to see Don Charles get his comeuppance now. You know what I mean? He's been in the game a very, very long time. Um, and Derek Zazora wasn't... Let me tell you the next thing. I remember when the, the hookup between Don Charles and and uh, and and Dubois happened, yeah? And I was telling... I was saying to people that Don Charles is a fantastic dancer. A lot of people don't know this. Like, back in the days in the 80s, there used to be a group called the Pasadena's. It used to be, like, their dancer in the back. But Don Charles is a, fa like, footwork and stuff. Don Charles gets it. And where have you seen a big heavyweight, right, reach round seven, eight, nine, and be on their toes dancing and popping out shots? That's down to Don Charles, right? So when everyone is being critical of him linking with Don Charles, right, I'm so happy that he, Daniel Dubois put in that performance. Not only that... For all the naysayers who are calling him triple triple knee, what well, triple knee? They're calling him. Uh, um, he's well, taking more knees. He'll be taking more knees. The Black Lives Matter. He should be called Daniel Kaepernick. All that kind of shit, right? It was so happy. It was really cool for me to see him go out there because he's actually a nice kid. I know, like years ago, I used to be very hard on him. That was such a very very good performance. It was calculated punching. Um, and he showed heart as well because he stood in firing range, right? He stood in firing range and said, I'm going to have it with you. And he did that and it all paid off for him and he came out victorious. So, yeah, I mean, so it's, it's really, really good for boxing and it's fantastic for British boxing to see um, what that young man has done. There's one thing that gripped me, well, really gripped me, well, hit me hard when I interviewed Daniel after the fight. I asked one simple question, his thoughts on his performance and the sort of like first words out of his mouth was, I couldn't allow myself to fail again. I just thought that, you know what? Fair play to you, big man. You went in there, you you, you got beat by Usyk, people calling you a two-time quitter and all this sort of stuff. And then you went in against Jarrell Miller, who the mind games going ahead of that fight where Jim Miller's just constantly berating you and berating you and berating you to stay mentally strong as well during that fight week and to get that win, man. It speaks speaks character to the young man. I think now he's, he's uh, I think that wins, that win's done him good. And I think when Frank Warren was talking about Daniel Dubois being his next star out of Britain, I think now he's back on that path again. You know yourself, Spencer, boxing snakes and ladders, isn't it? One loss, you're back down the snake, you're back down the bottom of the rung, then you don't get a good win, you're back up the ladder again. I think that's what Daniel Dubois is. He's back up that ladder again, and I think he can fight he, top five, six he, guys. He's back, he's, he's back at it. Um, 
<clears throat> and he can only improve from there. And what people seem to forget, all the other top guys are in their 30s. Daniel mm. Dubois is 26. He's got a bag of time left, right? Heavyweights mature round about age 30. Mm -hmm. So he's four years away from that. And all he's got to do is just keep on working and stay on that grind. And he's another young man that's, he, he's up there. He's, he's up there for the next generation. He's got, the, for the next generation, he's up there. Well, but can you can you explain to me, did you watch Ajit Kabayao against Makhmudov? I mean, you were in Saudi last time out with Makhmudov. Just explain to me that victory yeah. for Ajit Kabayao. I'll tell you this, yeah. Kabayao is fantastic. I saw his fight a few years back with Derek Sazora. I didn't for the European. I didn't rate him. I thought it was rubbish. If Derek, if because Don Charles couldn't fly out for that fight and he had somebody else in his corner. I thought if Don Charles was there, Derek would have knocked this guy out. Right? But Magnumov, yeah, I saw him fight last time out and I rated him, even though I didn't have nothing in front of him, but I rated him. I rated him for loads of other reasons, political reasons as well, right? Um, I rated that guy. But the way he got chopped down, man, oh man, trust me, great. Yeah. Um, um, Kabeo's a problem, mate. I'm letting you know now he's a problem. You know why he's a problem? Because he's actually educated thinking fighter. Mm. And what I, what I noticed just going on the Daniel Dubois and Caballero fight, I know a lot of heavyweights don't really go to the body as much as maybe they should. I mean, the lighter weights do, but heavyweights like the big head knockouts, the big concussive shots. But Daniel Dubois invested in the body, got um, Miller out of there. Caballero invested on Mahmoudov's body from the get-go. Even if it was a straight right, right hand, it wasn't a straight round right hand on the chin, it was a straight right hand on the gut. Investing in the body, just keep on investing, and I think that was the telling. I think that was the game plan going in. And listen, he, he executed perfectly. Well, well, it, it was, and not only that, but when you see guys doing that, they got good teachers around them. Mm. That's all it. Is. Um, he's got really, really good punch dexterity, educated shots, and I like also like he'd go hook to the body, hook to the head, right, and he go straight right hand to the body. Then he'll back off. Clever guy. I also like his ring generalship because he uses the ring really smart. Um, he moves around, he creates little pockets. As soon as he's in that pocket, that's when he starts firing. He's a clever guy, man. I'm telling you, he's a, he's a clever guy. He, um, he surprised me because I thought McNamara was going to destroy him. Talk to him about uh, Bevo and Apataya, Apataya man. Apataya, Destin, well, everyone thinking he's going to be a future pound for pound great. He's going to be spawn Tyson Fury. What a win for him against Ella Zorro and then Dimitri Bevo against Lyndon Arthur. I mean, Fair play to Lyndon. I don't think many people gave him that much of a chance, but he, he, he hung in there and he did well. Um, I like Lyndon Arthur a lot. I'm happy that him, um, Pat Barrett and the rest of his team um, was a Black Flash promotion. They got that to be on that big, massive stage. And I know they got financial reward as well. But I know Lyndon Arthur's kicking himself today because I think Lyndon Arthur was more happy at the fact that, listen, um, I'm going to go the distance with the guy that beat Canelo. I don't think Lyndon Arthur come around round four or five really thought that he was going to win the fight. He boxed to me like a man that was going to survive. And I'm not knocking Lyndon because I ain't been in there with Bivol, right? But I'm telling you, there was a point where he went downstairs to the body and he hurt Bivol. And I'm believing you that he had a beating of Bivol if he believed in himself. It was the right hook to the body, I think. I don't I don't know if that was a little bit maybe a smoke and mirrors from Bivol because Bivol just went back a little. I saw I know I think that was round five or something. Bro, like that. listen to me. That hurt Bivol. I'm telling you that hurt him. Oh, like, he went back. That hurt him. Mm. That hurt him. Now, maybe Bivol kind of underestimated um um Lyndon Arthur. But mm. what I am saying is this. Joshua Whites would be kicking himself that he didn't take that fight. I'm telling you that now. Mm -hmm. Joshua Bwatsi is kicking himself right now to say, Rah, I should have taken that fight. And that's that. Because we all know what Anthony Yard done to Lyndon Arthur, even though, and remember, this, this fight was kind of rushed as well for Lyndon. And I'm going to say the next thing. When I saw Lyndon at the press conference they had over in at Wembley, Lyndon Arthur was limping like he was injured. Right? And that was only, what, five weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Right, like yeah. he was injured. He was, he was limping at the he was limping at the hotel, believe it or not. So I'm limping a couple of times at the hotel as well. 
Well, like, prior to the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. So he went, I'm telling you, he went into that fight injured. Right? So maybe his mindset was like, the moral victory is like, I ain't going to get knocked out on goal points. Mm-hmm. But he should have he should have tried to take But it's easier said than done. I'm not in there, and I have a box to the level that Lyndon Arthur boxed that. So I give him credit for getting there, and it's a dream to change your challenger for a world title. But I want to tell you this now. That old Pajaya, all of the cruiserweights leave that brother alone. The <laughs> old, leave him alone, right? But let me tell you this now. Let me tell you this. The only one of the cruiserweights that can rock with him, yeah, is Richard Rappo. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Obajai doesn't mind taking a shot to get in there and he doesn't fight from a high, tight guard. Mm. And I'm telling you now, if Richard believes in himself, because sometimes Richard boxes like he ain't got no belief in himself, right? If Richard believes in himself, if Richard claps, he's going to done his dance. He can knock him out. He's the only one out of all of the cruiserweights that can fight this youth. Because... Preston Smith? No, he can't fight. And and I'm, I'm not knocking... Chris Smith done fantastically well. End of the day, record books are going to show that you actually became a world champion. But you take too many shots. And that's that. You take too many shots. And I'm going to be real with you that I actually fear for Chris Billing Smith simply because he takes too many shots. And I know, like, you want to get to my age and still have your faculties, right? And if you carry on fighting like that, you ain't going to have your faculties. Seriously, it's not good. You know what I mean? He needs to tighten up a little. I'm just being real. And but I don't care what people want to say. I don't care. I'm telling you, Chris Billing Smith, you, Chris Billing Smith couldn't fight Opa Jaya. Opa Jaya, sorry. He couldn't fight him. The only guy who has a remote chance of standing with his brother is, is Richard Rappel. Because Richard Rappel got some nuts punching power, right? And I see the work that, he, that Angel Fernandez is trying to do with him now. And even though he never had much in his way last time out, but he's, he's, he's boxing smarter now. Mm. You can't... You cannot fight with this guy. You know what I mean? You can't. You know what I mean? You, mm. I'm just being real. You can't. He's 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 an elacious puncher. He's horrible. He's spiteful as well. And you can see from his from the change room, when he's in the change room, he's an intensive human being. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've I've done a couple of interviews with him. He's a very, very intensive guy who wants to damage you. That's what he wants to do. But and he doesn't mind taking a shot to give a shot. He can do that with any other cruiserweight out there, but you can't really do that with Richard Rappel because I'm telling you, Richard Rappel's got nuts punching power. And if he believes in himself, that's the only guy. Everyone else forget about him. And when we're talking about Zorro, I'm happy for Zorro. If you know his story and everything else and his daughter, he's just got paid a bag of money, right? And But thank God that there was a bottom rope in professional boxing because the way he went back if that rope wasn't there, that could have been something serious of a casualty. Mm. But we also got to take it into to, to, to the realness. If you, you're you not the best in the country, you're not the best in Great Britain, and you're going up against somebody who is the best in the world. Not the best in the world because he holds the alphabet um, title, no. He's the best in the world because he actually is the best in the world. So it's a big, you know what I mean? It's a big, it's a massive gulf, a massive jump. Mm. But you know what? We shall see. Yeah, I mean, we shall we see. We shall see. And no doubt, listen, I'll remember this interview and I'll clip this out. If the M2 ever do fight and we get a good fight, I'll clip this out and no doubt we'll see if Mr. Spencer Fearon is, is, is correct. But listen, it's not many times okay. you're wrong, Spencer. I'll give you that, brother. But listen, one final one before I let you go enjoy the rest of your, of your evening now. Obviously, Anthony Joshua did his part of the deal and win his fight. Um, you, meant, you said there that the while the fight is gone. The Wilder, but that performance has robbed of robbed of us of that fight. So Anthony Joshua, for you, next you would go down that IBF route and go for Hergovic. If I was Anthony Joshua, yes, um, yeah, but like I would say, like the the real, real big money fight would be, even though everyone's talking about Saudi, and I think what's happening in Saudi Arabia is excellent. I think it's excellent that 
um, loads of professional fighters now are taking their shahada. That means that they're they're uh, they're 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 committed to Islam. I think that's a lovely thing as well, right? Um, I would say to any Joshua, him and Zili Zhang in China would be massive mm-hmm. for a vacant version of the world title, right? Um, because what's his WBO? He's WO interim champion at this present moment. So that would be a big fight. Um, but there's Hergovic there for Andy Joshua. But you know what? The major thing is that we still want to see Ty Security versus versus uh versus Andy Joshua. And what a backdrop story, like him being trained by the old trainer of Tyson Fury and how big that fight would be. That would be a massive, massive fight. Massive fight. But you know what? February 17th, Tyson Fury's got to get past Usyk. Right, and in professional boxing, nothing's a given. Even though I believe that Tyson Fury will win, but nothing is a given. Definitely, Spence, you're, you're correct on that one. But listen, we've only got four minutes left of the Zoom call, and I, listen, I love speaking to you as always. But you got anything you'd like to add quickly? Yeah, I'd like to um, save one life, raising a lot of money for the the guards and people in the Gaza Strip and the, and people in the Palestine. And myself and Ame Khan last week we raised three hundred and seventy four thousand pounds so massive big up to legal blows the lawyer that put that all together for me and also to platinum promotions have to mention those people listen as always i appreciate your time as always brother and um, i can speak to you a lot longer than the zoom interview would let, allow me anyway <laughs> but uh, what are you doing i hope you're i hope you're celebrating and doing everything massive and nice right i'm, doing, I'm not gonna be I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing everything the right way yeah, you know, please. Um, fingers crossed for you, and a massive, massive big up to the full family group because I'm I'm looking forward to the end of year seasonal celebration. So I'm going out there so I can look all swanky and eat a lot of food. So thank you very much to the full family for that for that invitation. Thank you. Listen, I'm going down to Keswick. I'm down at the Lake District for my New Year with my family, so I'll enjoy myself down there. But Spencer, you're always, you are always down at the Lake District. You must have shares in it. Every time oh, I speak you- to you down there. You, the kids. You, you, you would love to. You would think I would have a house down there by now, but I don't, Spence. I don't. Maybe one day I'll buy something down there, but until then... You, I... don't, don't lie. Don't lie. You, you're getting paid, man. Soon as, soon as you're getting rid of everyone at, at IFL, you're getting all the money. I know them tricks. Nah, you know me, Spence. I've got to keep, got to keep ready for it. You know, you know the score, big man. Spence, I will catch you in 2024, but when it comes, have a great new year. And like I said, I'll catch you in 2024, brother. Peace and love, yeah. Always, my man, always. Speak to you soon, Spence. I'm fine.